Hi, I'm Kat Berry with Compass in Chicago, and today I'm talking to my friend Fedora Wu, who is an agent with Compass in Los Angeles, serving the city and the surrounding uh, areas. And so we're going to chat a little bit about what's going on in the real estate market in Los Angeles. So I wanted to talk with you today, Fedora, because the whole country is shifting and overnight uh, we've had to change how we do business. and. Um, We've also changed like how people shop for homes. So I just want to hear a little bit about how you've adapted to that. So um, tell me about yourself, where you work in like a couple sentences, and then we'll get to the questions. Thanks for the intro, Kat. Yeah, my name is Fedora Wu with Compass over here in LA. Um, and so LA is a large city and I survive, I serve a 30 mile radius, 30 to 50 mile radius actually in greater Los Angeles. I'm born and bred in Los Angeles, so I really, I know the city really well from the west to the east. Cool. Into the values as well. So we we went into effect into shelter in place roughly around March 16th through 18th. I think those are the dates. And overnight, I mean, we've been quarantined for about a month now, uh, four to five weeks, if not entering our six by the time that this is all over with. Yeah. Um, and so we've seen a shift from the way that my clients were searching for homes. Mm -hmm. um, I do have clients that I'm currently working with that started searching prior to the shelter in place. And I do have clients that started their search while the shelter and when the shelter in place actually took effect. So the clients that already were looking, we just had to adapt. And right. you know, with life, there's oh, so many multitude changes. So what we had to do was we transitioned to virtual showings. Mm -hmm. So instead of there's no more open houses, uh, there hasn't been for the last five weeks. Right. And so we, what we had to was reach out to the listing agent on the properties they were interested in, obtain virtual tours, and they're really detailed tours and not just photos, um, because th that, that doesn't really connect the pieces. Yeah, linking but the photos what, together isn't enough. No, completely. I mean, you only guess where the hallway connects to right. and all that stuff. So what we had to do is, and, and they're, they're terrible videos, but they get the job done. <laughs> <laughs> and you get a sense so, of, uh, <laughs> and so you, it's, it's typically these hand recorded videos from the listing agent as they're walking through the community. Uh, let's say we're looking at a condo. This is a parking area. This is a subterranean on the street. This is the street view. This is how you walk into the community. Here's the garden. Um, and then this is on the third floor. And um, then you see the walkthrough of the unit and what the view is from the bedrooms, from the bathrooms. So that it really gives the buyer um, a sense of whether they want to um, tour this property yeah. or not. So for you, yeah, that virtual tour that is to because this is how i've been doing it here too it's i go through drive by scope out the street and then if the listing agent doesn't have the video do the video and then if they like it then i figure out a way to get them in in a staggered way is that what you're doing as well or are people feeling comfortable writing offers just based on the videos How's that working? One of two. And so in the city of Los Angeles, if the address is actually Los Angeles, California, we are not allowed to do showings. However, exactly. just the city is really small. It's right. not too large. And most of my clients luckily are actually looking outside of the city. Um, so even though it's only five minutes outside of Los Angeles, right. this is no longer, even though it's greater. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so um, many of my um, clients, they're really just focused on doing a virtual tour first. Hey, if it looks great, then we'll go ahead and get an in-person showing. Okay. We're donning masks, gloves, all the protection. We're maintaining social distancing, absolutely. Um, and myself, sometimes I'm even outside of the unit. Right. They go in for and I tour the home. It, and all the showings are extremely quick. It's, they're probably five to ten minutes long. Right. Yeah. And on top of that, um, we do have to sign a form. It's called the Coronavirus PEAD. Um, I don't know how it is like in Chicago, but PAD stands for Property Entry Advisory Declaration. And essentially, it's really just a consent form that we mm -hmm. must sign prior to entering the home. Sure. So that's what we're dealing with. And that's for every single home that we're touring right now. Right. Okay, that makes sense. So yeah. for, for the people that started their search since the shelter in place went into effect, what are their driving factors? What has forced someone, is it because they're living, they don't like where they're living currently or is it some other factor? What, cause I know you work mostly with buyers. So what have you seen there? 
I'm extremely buyer heavy and I absolutely, I really love it because <laughs> many of my buyers are first time home buyers and they're absolutely ecstatic about this process. And this has been on their minds since 2018, 2019. So now that it's coming to fruition and the resounding message and just everything that I've been hearing from my clients the past three, four, five years is when is the market going to turn in our favor? When yeah. is this happening? And yeah. now that this is, it, this is what I call the pandemic market. Right. And so they're absolutely ecstatic. And however, we are being cautionary um, mm -hmm. in, in our visits. However, this is the moment that they've been waiting for. If your funds are not tied up in stocks or have not been right. affected by COVID-19 in any way, this is the time that you've been waiting for. The ball is finally in your court. Right. What we're seeing in the LA market is about 5 to 8% price drop from the okay. initial listing price. Uh, this is pr homes that were listed prior to shelter in place. Right, right. And so five to 8% from that, we're also seeing longer days on the market. Yeah. We're seeing perfectly, perfectly nice homes on, so just sitting on the market for right. 30 days. And that never There's happened. Wrong with that. It hasn't happened Ready to go, years. we've been ready, remodeled. Yeah. Um, and, and we've been seeing escrows fall out just purely due to COVID-19. Again, sure. nothing wrong with the home. These are homes that typically last year would have been competing between five to 10 offers. Right now we're seeing right. between maybe one to five, two to that's five, so, two to yeah. five. So that's think, what I'm getting. I think you hit it on a nail with some of the things that are happening here too. It's like, if you, I mean, our inventory is down, our prices are actually holding strong so far. Um, time on the market is up a little bit and, um, definitely like new listings are down. So I think that if you, like you said, have, if you're not, if your money isn't tied up in the stock market, your job is secure and you've been saving for the last few years with the interest rates and the opportunities. And especially if like the seller was under contract and that contract fell through because of the, the pandemic or, you know, the buyer's, you know, career or whatever, then that's a great opportunity for somebody else to step in. So if, if you do have a stable, financial situation, it is a good time to take advantage of it. So now have Absolutely. you seen the inventory down there? I mean, are new listings hitting the market? So we're seeing 50% of the listings come onto the market compared to last year. Right. We were obviously at a higher um, exact, it was nearly double uh, uh -huh. listings that right. um, Southern California as a whole was taking on last year. So inventory is down. However, the serious buyers remain. One yeah. other driving force is truly the record low interest rate. This is yeah. not a gimmick. If you just look at the historical rates, I mean, in 07, 08, 09, I mean, we were looking at seven to 8%. Mm -hmm. And right now we are looking at record low of three and a half. So yeah. we're not even half of where we were last uh, 10 years ago. Yeah. So the three and a half percent, and that, this is with great credit, of course, um, and please speak with your local lender about this. <laughs> Disclaimer. <laughs> no, I wrote a contract today for 3.65. <laughs> You know, that's amazing. We'll see. Let's run your credit check first. <laughs> <laughs> My client had strong credit. Her uh, her offer was for three point six five interest rate. So <laughs> fantastic. As long as it's a fix, it sounds sounds like a good deal to me. Yeah, um, but yeah. So the re we're, we're, we're at record low interest rates. Last year, we were in the fours. Um, we thought we were actually going to head into the fives this year. Um, and, and yeah. Yeah. And that's not going to happen now. And I think that, you know, um, again, that's a huge savings. One percentage point over the life of a loan, a 30 year, even a 15 year mortgage. That's a big, I know you probably don't do a lot of 15 years out there, but um, I do some here and it's a huge savings. So. Absolutely. And in terms of a monthly payment, um, just to break it down for y'all folks out there, um, if we're looking at a $700,000 price point, a 1% difference on your interest rates, that is nearly five to $600. That's a nice, let's see, that's your whole condo fee here. That's like, you know, your monthly assess, because I saw condominiums or I mean a variety of housing stock, but in Chicago, you know, obviously there's, we have a lot of buildings, uh, condominium buildings, and some of them can be, that's pretty much a mid range for, especially for a $700,000 place. Um, that's going to be your assessment at least. So that's great. It's a big savings. Exactly. Yep. Your purchasing so, power just went further. Right, exactly. Huge, huge difference. Even if you, even if you look at the fact that prices have increased a little bit here anyway, so over last year, um, as a city as a whole, um, of course, it depends on what neighborhood, because neighborhoods here appreciate differently, as I'm sure they do there. But that's still going to put you at a in a good position. So, um, 
So switching gears a little bit, what are your buyers? Of, have you noticed anything different since people are spending so much time at home when they actually get out to go look? Have you, have you noticed any change in what, what piques their interest or what, what calls them to a property? Whereas they maybe wanted an open floor plan before, are they looking more now for like different spaces, office space? What, what have you seen happen? Well, it's, it's been interesting. Um, just to put this in kind of a um, humorous light is I, I've been actually, actually asking my clients, can you see yourself being quarantined here? Right. And that's such a, it's such a real question because now, yeah, for sure. Exactly. And many of us are homebodies. And even if we're not, um, the, the desirability for a flex work from home space or kind of situation or a space for a den, um, just some kind of multi-use space is so, so important. Mm -hmm. And, and so this is what, and good lighting is always a factor. Yeah. So it's really just what makes it home for you. This is the driving force. Mm -hmm. And Yes, the number of bedrooms is important, but it's really also about, hey, do I sell my seat self being here and absolutely being in love with this place at least yeah. a seven out of 10? And do I, you know, does this feel good? Does this feel like home to me? And, yeah. and so these are the important questions that I've been asking my clients. Yeah, it's funny you say that about being quarantined because I've always said, do you see yourself living here? Can you see yourself living here? That's something I've, that's like my open house oh, line. No, I'm through open houses and now it's like, can you see yourself <laughs> being here literally all the time? <laughs> literally, literally. <laughs> Important thing to wonder, yeah. yeah. Um, we, had a, we had a happy hour with my office last week and one of the questions that we went around and asked is, what, do you, what have you realized that you hate about your home now that you're in it all the time? And what, do you, what have you realized that you love? So I've personally been asking my buyers, um, what, have they, you know, what have they noticed that they absolutely need now um, in a place that they purchase versus what they're renting? or when they upgrade, what are they gonna need? Because you do notice that stuff when you're there all the time, so that's great. Um, do you have any predictions on, on trends of how, um, how you know, people are going to shop for homes differently after this? And also, what, what do you see, so it's a two-part question, how are people gonna shop for homes differently going forward, and how do you think what they're looking for is gonna change? Are there features that, you know, you predict in the future will be more important based on this. In the next 12 to 18 months, um, obviously none of us have a crystal ball, but right. what I do see is it, and this is really just the resounding message that I've been hearing the past few years is the, the search for a home is going to become more increasingly important. Yeah. Um, whereas yeah. my clients have been able to sacrifice a few things for, a place that did not feel like a home, but it hit six out of 10 things on their list. Mm -hmm. But this is really, really because of this pandemic, they're really going to look for something that is, that just, just has a resounding message. Speaks of to them strongly. Home. Yeah, yes, absolutely. And I have a feeling that they may be less willing to compromise on a few things. It must have X, Y, and Z. Otherwise, they're less um, flexible on their deal breakers, and they're really just looking for a place that it yeah. feels like home. Well, and yeah. if it's a buyer's market there for the first time in years, they're going to finally have the opportunity to want that 10 out of 10, because sometimes, as you know, it's not realistic. Like, you know, you're just, exactly. you're, you know, you're, you get eight or seven out of 10, and that's amazing, it, just depending on your yeah. budget and where you're shopping. So, um my predictions for the home design is continues to be open floor plan, good lighting. It really just has everything. Um, many condos out here do not have an in-unit washer and dryer. It, they're typically in the community laundry. And so I have a feeling that may become moved from the wish list portion into the deal breakers. Yeah, I agree. Um, just about sanitary mm -hmm. and just having something that's your own and right. really just not willing to compromise on that. However, it really is up to the inventory what does come onto the market, but really just the driving force is just a place that feels like home and where they can see themselves comfortably um, for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with me today and to share your experience, um, what's going on in California. I think it's interesting for people to, I also think it's important for people to kind of get outside of our hyper-local bubble right now and to kind of um, see that there are similarities going on across the country, even though every market is very local. So I appreciate you sharing um, what our friends in LA are up to out there. And I hope that you continue to stay safe. 
stay safe (laughs) (laughs) and uh, keep uh, making that homeownership dream a reality. So thanks so much, Kat. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Stay safe to you as well. And if you are curious about anything going on in the Los Angeles market, contact Fedora. Just go ahead and shoot us an email, um, either one of us, and we'll get back to you real quick. Um, Thanks so much for having me today. Stay safe, stay healthy, and most of all, stay sane. Yes. (laughs) Thanks so much. Talk to you later.